Alrighty everyone, we just got done creating our roof assemblies. Hopefully everyone's caught up. We're going to go back to our ground floor because we're going to create a staircase. Now those of you who had difficulties with the staircase in AutoCAD Land, I promise you this is 8,000 times easier. So we click on our architecture tab. We click on stair under the circulation panel. And the very first thing that we're confronted with is we're, we're sketching our stairs. And what we can do here is say right here, we're sketching our run of stairs. We're creating a straight row of stairs. Now you can see you have full step spiral or you have a center end spiral. You have different options that are available to you, but we're going to use a straight staircase because it's absolutely the easiest thing in the world to use. So I'm zooming in just a little bit more. <clears throat> I come over here, I'm not going to change my properties because all the rules about how high something needs to be for code and how long the stair treads need to be and all that stuff, completely, totally handled by Revit. You don't have to change a thing. And so we're going from the ground floor to the second floor. All the stuff, we're just not changing. We're just leaving all the defaults completely in place. We're going to draw our run. I'm going to just pick a spot out here in space, left click, and as I drag my mouse down, you see down there in the section where my storefront is, every time I make the run of stairs long enough, Revit tells me how many stair risers I've created and how many I have left to create. So I'm at my halfway point. Eight risers created and eight remaining, so I'll left click. And then I just move my mouse over here a little bit, left click again, and I'll create the remaining stairs that I need. Of course, I want to make sure I'm drawing everything in a nice straight line. There we go. Just like that, everything lines up. <clears throat> now, before I finish my sketch mode, I need to position, I need to put this in place. And you can see here I have one. I got this little eight. I got that little nine right there. And I got that 16. That tells me what stair tread numbers that I'm dealing with right there. Pretty handy little tool if you ever need it and you want to know what it is. So I'm going to grab the whole kit and caboodle, and I'm going to move him using the move command. I also typed MV. I can't say there's a command prompt. You don't even have to push return, just MV. After you select objects, we'll start the command for you. And I'm gonna start at this bottom corner. I'm gonna move from this outside corner of the stair, right, of the uh, stair runner, and I'm gonna zoom in to this corner right here. Okay. So now, unselect everything. And I'm going to highlight both ends of my stairs like this. Remember to select multiple objects in Revit. When you're using the Modify tool, select one object. If you hold your Control key down, remember you see how it's got that little plus sign right next to my cursor. That means I'm adding objects to the selection. I let go, and it goes away. If I hold the Shift key down when I'm using the Modify tool, see the little minus sign? So you can just go back and forth between that. So I want to add this one. So both ends of my staircase are now selected. Type MV, and that starts my move command. And I just want to move the end of this so it's in line with that grid line. Why? Because that's the edge of the roof, or the, uh, the edge of the uh, floor, line, uh, floor slab above. All right, so I'm done with that. I'll hold the Shift key, and then we'll select this part of the stairs, which means this is still selected. I don't want to use these grips to move because that will also resize my stairs. I don't want to resize them. I just want to move them around. Now this move needs to happen in two different ways because first I need to move him far enough away so I can actually snap onto my edge of storefront <laughs> like that. Let me, let me use my undo command. I want to show you that again. There we go. So I'm highlighting the stair. I want this part of my staircase, not this inside that's still highlighted in blue, but you see how there's that, two, that, that band that runs around the perimeter of everything? I want that band, the outside of that band, to line up right there where the storefront is which means I need to move it in two different phases, because if I select that point, oh, well, it lines
lines up with the uh, forgot it lined it up lined up with the edge of the wall, so I can just use that one more time. Highlight the section I want to move. Start my move command. I want to move it from this point to that point, and you can see the edge of my wall line just above my cursor, how it's highlighted. That means that I'm aligning to it. And since that I know is in alignment with the edge of the storefront, then that's where I know I need to move it to. Left click. There we go. <clears throat> Your staircase is done. So we click on the big green check. And Revit's doing all the calculations, all the modeling, everything. Now see, here's, this, here's the, uh, the up arrow. And you can see all this is dashed in. There's that break line because this is the point where everything is happening above your head and you're not going to see it. But we still want to indicate there's stuff there, which is why it looks the way it does. Now, on to one more last little piece. Click on your View tab. Click on 3D View, Default 3D View. This is your project as we've drawn it to date. So if I hold down my Shift key and I click the scroll wheel on my mouse, I can pan around or 3D orbit my way through this project. <clears throat> this is what we've done so far. Everybody, by the time you show up to class on Tuesday, everybody should be at this point. And I do mean everybody, even those people who were not there in class previously. Otherwise, it's going to be a real hard time keeping up. Now, in order to see a little more of what's happening in, the, uh, happening in this uh, model, I changed my visual style. So my visual style is right next to my object, or my view detail. I want to change this to, I like using consistent colors. Because if I use shaded, then it basically puts a, a light source right over here. And that, that shadow is just always going to be on the right-hand side of the view. I don't always want to see that. And yes, if you have enough graphic property on your laptop or on your computer, you can use realistic or ray trace. Uh, it will suck up a lot of processing power and you won't be able to spin it around quite this freely. So those are, some of you noticed this last time. You notice there's a big giant hole going right through the middle of it. That's perfectly okay. Long story short, we haven't fixed that yet. So don't worry. Everything is doing what it needs to be done. This is what your project should look like. <laughs> and uh, that's really the end of it. So hopefully everyone gets caught up, and I will see you guys in class.